Legend has it that there's a wild man living in the mangroves of southwest Florida. At first, I didn't believe it, even when the cell phone pictures and shaky videos kept cropping up online and on social media. It was this modern-day Bigfoot. And now, I'm here to tell you he's real. People are going to call me a YouTube conspiracy theorist or tell me that I'm crazy, but I met him. He's real. And he's got a story to tell. And you need to hear it. I guess the best place for me to start would be to tell you why I even went out looking for this guy. I had heard stories, urban legends. I mean, if you've lived in Florida in the last 15 years, you've probably heard them too. And, uh, then about two years ago, this video went viral. Some, uh, drunk spring breakers. They, uh, they got spooked by a homeless guy who popped out at them. They were kayaking in this popular spot, and I thought, there's no way. There's no way this could be real. But I looked at the footage, and the more I saw it, the more I realized there's no way it could be fake. I paused it. And uh, it was grainy, it was blurry, but... I, I was able to see his face. And I don't think I've ever seen that much uh, pain and suffering in somebody's eyes. And then I just had to find this guy. I had to find out who he was, why he was living that way. I almost became obsessed with the idea. And I went out looking for him. Grabbed my kayak. Grabbed a couple of cameras. We were a two-man crew, and we paddled close to 400 miles of mangroves. And then we found him, or more like he found us in that first encounter. That was not pleasant. After that rough first few minutes, he calmed down. He regained his humanity. And he showed us the man that was underneath the beast. And he also told us the story that created the beast. And it all started in 2004. It turns out our man of the mangroves isn't homeless at all. It's actually quite the opposite. The man of the mangroves is Christopher Kennedy the tech billionaire that disappeared about 12 years ago. It was believed that he died in the Indian Ocean tsunami because he was supposed to be in Thailand and Sri Lanka in December of that year. He actually survived the tsunami because he wasn't there. He was supposed to be, though. He was to meet his wife and son for their annual Christmas vacation. But business kept him in New York for two days longer than expected. He never saw them again. Chris hadn't been seen since then. Until now. And even now he felt too uncomfortable talking into a camera or a microphone. He let us follow him around. He paddled one of our kayaks. Showed us his new home. Showed us how he hunts. What he eats. Where he sleeps. I asked him why... He disappeared into the mangroves. He could have gone anywhere. Why did he pick a mangrove forest as his new home? And his answer was quite heartbreaking. He said the mangroves could have saved his family. And now 
he needed the mangroves to save him. When I asked him how the mangroves could save him, he told me the mangroves were the only place where he could find peace after he lost everything. When I asked him how the mangroves could have saved his family, what he told me was eye-opening. Protection against coastal disasters has been identified as an important service of mangrove ecosystems. In the search for his family, Chris came upon primitive villages with wider mangroves between them and the coast and noticed that they experienced significantly fewer deaths than areas with narrower or no mangroves. Mangroves acted as a bio-shield, with villages located behind them suffering less damage than the ones directly exposed to the coast. In the aftermath of the tsunami, evidence has emerged indicating that mangrove forests played a crucial role in saving human lives and property. Green belts of other trees, vegetated coastal dunes, seagrass beds, and intact coral reefs all performed a similar protective function in some areas, where mangroves and other coastal habitats had been destroyed, often illegally, as in the case of the five-star resort where his family was staying. The waves were able to penetrate far inland, destroying homes, inundating farmlands, and washing away people and livelihoods. The conversion of mangrove habitats into shrimp farms, tourist resorts, agricultural and urban lands over the past decade, as well as destruction of coral reefs, contributed significantly to the catastrophic loss of human life and settlements during the Indian Ocean tsunami. Conserving and restoring coastal mangrove areas is essential if communities are to recover and be protected from future similar events. I asked Chris what he thinks will happen next. He looked puzzled for a minute, as if I was asking him something he hadn't given any thought to in years. He said he still has more to learn about the fascinating plants that make up his new home. He mentioned being amazed by the way the red mangrove excludes salt at the root via their own form of reverse osmosis. He wondered out loud if his vast resources could be put to good use in unlocking the secret of replicating this process efficiently and affordably for underdeveloped countries. He looked sad when he told me that 10% of humans don't have clean drinking water and he didn't understand how this was still possible on a planet that's three-fourths covered by water. Then he shut down. He didn't say another word to me for hours and he only spoke again to say goodbye. Do I think the man of the mangroves could ever recover and rejoin society? I know I wouldn't be strong enough to overcome the loss like that. As for him, I really do hope so. The world can use more people like him, because too many of us seem to have forgotten that this is the only planet we've got, and his sad story is a reminder that we need to do a better job of taking care of it.